Toronto-based film named The Raffle. The film opens with the scenes of the leading character, Francesca, who's seen in a state of shock to hear bad news on the phone. It's revealed that the call was from the morgue house to identify her husband's dead body, who died in a terrible car crash that night. Francesca's life falls from that night. She takes her friend Caesar along with her and leaves to see the body. On her way, she could see her husband's car had crashed on the side of the highway. Her husband, Maurizio's dead body, was kept in a hospital's morgue house, close to the highway. The minute Francesca reaches the hospital in her rich fur coat and sees her husband's dead body, she realizes her life has fallen apart. She will no longer be the rich influence she used to be. Francesca also thinks about what will happen to their baby daughter, Julia. How will she and her baby girl survive in this cruel world? Francesca senses her late husband's friend's ill intentions towards her since the funeral day. Francesca was considered a symbol of beauty at that time. She was young and beautiful. All of Maurizio's friends had evil eyes set on her. She felt threatened by all of her late husband's elite friends. The next day, Francesca is seen in her classic office clothes, who lights up a cigarette. Caesar, Francesca's friend and Maurizio's company's legal advisor, shows up in Francesca's office and delivers another piece of bad news to her. Caesar tells that Maurizio has left his company and Francesca under heavy debt. Since he did not pay his insurance installments from the last few months, Francesca will not have the insurance money either. Francesca indeed was mourning the loss of her husband, but at the same time she was convinced that her husband must have left her a great fortune. Sadly, another bubble pops, and Francesca meets with the harsh reality. Caesar tells his friend Francesca that her house, farms, and all of the property are going to be possessed by the bank soon, because he was bankrupt too. Francesca had only a few days to mourn her husband's death, and then everything was going to be taken from her. Maurizio had only left miseries in his will. Francesca does not even have the option to go back to her father since he was a lower middle class man and could not afford to look for his daughter or bring up his granddaughter, Julia. Despite being good at heart, Francesca's father did not have a single penny in his pocket to pay for his return tickets when he came to visit Francesca on becoming a widow, let alone raising her and her daughter. Francesca gives him the money to get his train tickets so he could return to his town. Francesca expected nothing more than well wishes from her father. On the other hand, Francesca's mother-in-law cuts ties with her after Maurizio dies and denies helping her financially. She literally dissociates herself from Francesca and shows no pity for her granddaughter, Julia. She denies having Julia's child support. She has to fire her faithful housekeeper, Rosaria, who is running her home chores for decades because Francesca had very little left to survive in this world. Rosaria shows gratitude and tells her that she will not leave her in tough times. She tells Francesca that she will not charge her a single penny for the work she will do from now on. Francesca is pleased to see someone supporting her through these bad days. Francesca decides to pay a visit to one of her posh friends, Christina, and asks her to recruit her as an employee in her clothing brand. Christina is shocked to see Francesca, who was once a VIP customer, and is now desperate for a normal wage. Christina agrees upon terms and recruits her as an employee. Francesca was not embarrassed to become a normal wage worker from a rich woman. She was just in desperate need of money that she could use for a better living. One day, Francesca's rich girlfriends spot her working in the shop. They find it very saddening, but also they find it disgraceful, so they decide to cut ties with her. They didn't want their rich reputation to be ruined by being friends with a poor and needy lady. The same day, Maurizio's rich friend shows up at the cloth shop and tries to take her for granted. He thinks the job was her necessity, and he tries taking advantage of her. But Francesca was not made for this. She was too pretty to let someone take her for granted. Besides, the job she was doing did not offer her enough money to cover Maurizio's million dollars of debt. Francesca ends up quitting the job. Francesca was in a serious financial crisis, and had no other option but to liquefy her husband's last asset, a yacht. Caesar ends up buying it from her at a very low cost. This could have been a huge loss to Francesca, but since she had zero balance in her account, even the little amount paid for the yacht seemed more than enough to her. After the yacht, she sells all her luxury furniture and paintings and auctions her fancy clothes and shoes in order to attain some money to pay off her husband's debts. She pays the majority of the debt with the money she got from auctioning her home possessions. Since Francesca was free of Maurizio's debts, she had to figure a way out for her daughter's good fortune. One day, her maid Rosaria comes to her and tells her that she should not worry because it doesn't take long for a woman this beautiful to get remarried. A few days pass by and Francesco gets an invitation from a wealthy old man named Enrico. 
Enrico was one of Maurizio's associates and wanted to meet Francesca to mourn Maurizio's departed soul. Francesca agrees on meeting him because she thinks Enrico might present a proposal. But it turns out that Enrico is already a married man. He takes her on a luxury dinner date in a classy restaurant at night. Enrico offers her to pay all of her and her daughter's expenditure for the rest of her life, but only if she agrees to let him take advantage of her whenever he makes a visit to her city. Enrico clarifies that he only seeks one night stands from her, and since he's a politician, he cannot leave his wife and marry Francesca. That can have a negative impact on his image. Indirectly, Enrico wanted Francesca to be his call girl because she was 50 times hotter and more attractive than his wife, and since her husband had passed away, the vacancy was available. She says nothing and goes along with the flow in order to survive in the world. A few days later, Caesar hooks up Francesca with another rich and cunning businessman. He gives Francesca a hideous fake necklace and turns out to be a penny pincher who promises to give her a real necklace diamond soon. She ends up throwing his fake necklace in his dentures and leaves in the middle of the date. Later, Francesca visits her friend's place. She finds a fur coat in her wardrobe, which looked exactly like the one she owned once. It turns out that it was actually Francesca's original fur coat. Francesca's friend, Carla, reveals that she had a woman buy this fur coat from the auction, which Francesca had put on to pay off her debts. Carla had the coat modified for her so it becomes unrecognizable by Francesca. Carla says that she was not in the position to buy such an exclusive and expensive fur coat, so she bought a woman to bid less for the coat. Francesca realizes that even her friends are backstabbing her and loses her faith in everyone around her. One day, Carla's husband, Sandro, shows up at Francesco's place. Francesca receives him in her luxury silk robe. This makes Sandro fall for her even more. Sandro can't keep it in his pants, so he confesses his feelings for Francesco. She, on the other hand, becomes sexually charged to see Sandro confessing to her. Sandro tells her that he will worship her body if she lets him get inside her pants. The two end up turning each other on and having intercourse the whole night. Just when Sandro feels like he's in a promiscuous affair with his wife's friend, Francesca makes her first move by telling him to buy a fur coat for her. When she specifies the details, it appears that she was demanding for the exact coat that was once hers, and now Sandro's wife possesses it. Francesca threatens him to get her the coat in any way, or else she will tell about his secret affair to his wife, Carla. Francesca had gotten out of the bubble and now knew how to get along with the hungry wolves. All she had to do was tease them with her body a little and get whatever she wishes for in return. Anyways, Sandro is frightened by Francesco's threat and ends up buying an expensive fur coat and sends it over to Francesca's place. She ends up selling it to a tailor for a handsome amount in return. With her coat money, she pays off her daughter's school dues and pays one year's home rent. And with the leftover amount, she buys a cheap second-hand car. Carla finds out that her husband had bought Francesca an expensive fur coat on installments and is still paying the monthly installments. Carla acts out and reaches Francesca's home and fights with her over the coat and demands to give her the coat back. She tells Carla that she has sold the coat and spent all the money too. Upon this act, Carla gets full of rage and starts revealing her late husband's dark secrets. She tells her that Maurizio had an affair with another woman. Don't think that you were his only beauty. The girl he was having an affair with was even prettier and better than you. Everybody knew about the secret affair, but chose not to tell you. Carla shuts Francesca's attitude down with the news and leaves. Francesca decides to meet the other woman Maurizio was dating. She wants to find out what was in that girl that Maurizio didn't see in her. Francesca finds out that the woman, Camilla, was a lady with a good heart. Camilla reveals that she wanted Maurizio to leave you and marry her instead. But Maurizio chose Francesca and his daughter over Camilla. Francesca leaves Camilla's place with a brand new spirit. She knew that this woman was from an upper class society and people in her society had not laid eyes upon her until Maurizio was alive. She knows how badly men of her society desire her. She knew that the hungry predators were willing to pay her anything for flashing her body. And she doesn't want to stick with one man because she's hungry for every man's money. She doesn't want to limit herself to one man. She ends up coming up with a master plan in order to snatch maximum money from rich snobs. She sets up a lottery and allows 20 entrances to participate in the lottery. Each participant will have to give a hundred million lira to enter the lottery contest and declares that the winner will get Francesca as a prize. The reason for charging this immense amount was to seek the true lover and admirers who would go to any extent to get her. She also announces that the names of the 20 participants will be kept secretive. Whoever will win the lottery will win Francesca for four years as his personal property and will have the full rights to do whatever he wants to do with her. 
Francesca seeks Caesar's help for legal documentation and asks him to approach men from the elite society and to make sure that the men are eligible to pay the lottery ticket price and are desperate to sleep with her. Soon the lottery news circulates all over the city. Francesca's mother-in-law comes to hear about the news and gets into an argument with her. She tells Francesca that she is disrespecting her family by showcasing her body. Francesca, whose heart had been stone cold due to how society was treating her, shuts down her mother-in-law and tells her she couldn't care less. Francesca also gives a harsh reality check and recalls the time when she outcasted her on Maurizio's death and denied helping her financially. She warns her mother-in-law to keep her head out of her business and keeps going. Collecting 20 men who would pay 100 million liras to sleep with a woman is an impossible task, but it was no effort in Francesca's case. Her tickets get sold out in a very short amount of time. At one point, Francesca realizes she doesn't want most of the men who bought the tickets to take part in the lottery. The men who bought the tickets were all known to Francesca. One man was her best friend Serena's husband. She realized her relationship with Serena would end on bad terms after she found out her husband bought the ticket. She believes that Serena will ignore her husband's thirst and come for her being the evil witch. Francesca was least expecting a girl to be taking part in the lottery, but to her surprise, Maurizio's mistress, Camilla, is one of the 20 people who bought the tickets. Camilla reveals to Francesca that she admires her beauty. Caesar takes advantage of the moment and offers Francesca to support her and Julia for life. In return, he asks her to marry him. Francesca pretends she doesn't know his thirsty intentions, but deep down she knows exactly what Caesar was looking for. In the end, Francesca accidentally hits a man named Antonio with her car and ends up falling in love with him. Despite Antonio being an ordinary man, Francesca finds him different from other men of the society and finds a spark in him. Her child, Julia, bonds with Antonio as well. Francesca stresses, thinking bad scenarios if Antonio finds out about the lottery. But Francesca finds out that Antonio was a fraud who knew Francesca was going to win $20 million and had purposely gotten hit by her car so he could make her fall in love with him. Francesca, after getting deceived by a man in the name of love, plays the man card. She disguises and informs the state police about an illegal lottery conducted which promotes prostitution and sends them Caesar's office location. The police raid the area and find heavy checks with participants' names. Police soon announce to publish the names in the news. All participants were either politicians or rich businessmen whose reputation was going to be washed away. As the participants stress, Francesca confesses to the police officer about the $20 million in checks. She tells him that the participants are her late husband's business associates and friends who have filled the checks to help her financially. Francesca ends up saving their reputation and getting all the checks in her account without becoming any of the participants' property. She lives happily with Julia and her maid Rosaria, and the film ends there. To watch more explanations of these kinds of movies, click on the thumbnails on your screen, and don't forget to share your thoughts about today's video in the comment section. Kindly like the video and subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And at last I will say, stay safe, stay well, see you next time, and thanks for watching.